what's cooking Timberwolves okay so we're getting into the final stretch of school but the weather's not really cooperating I have to say um, this week what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two meals um, that are kind of staples in my household anyways uh, we're gonna do Asian stir fry and homemade mac and cheese which are both awesome um, this Asian stir fry uh, is super versatile that's the demo I'm gonna be doing for you guys right now you can add whatever flavors you want uh, to it as well. Um, what I'm gonna do with this demo is I'm just gonna give you with a base, basically. Yes, I am at school. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna provide you with a base sauce. And then if you wanna add extra flavors, like I'm gonna be adding ginger to mine. Um, if you wanna be uh, adding you know, fish sauce or cayenne or uh, Thai chili, um, sweet chili sauce, um, there's tons of places that you can go with this, okay? Stir fries are awesome. Um, it's a really, really good way to use up any leftover vegetables that you have. You can throw in a lot of different vegetables into it. Uh, for my demo for today, um, I'm just going to be doing broccoli, onions, uh, I have some corn, I have pepper I'm going to add in. So just stuff that um, I have in my pantry, okay? I know in your recipe it says that you can also add in like snow peas or beans or um, bean sprouts or anything like that. Carrots, all of that stuff can go in. It's all really, really good. But for, for my demo anyways, I'm just going to be keeping it to the ones that I listed, all right? So very first thing you're gonna do is of course, make sure that you wash your hands. I've already washed mine, they're ready to roll. Um, and then we are going to get out our veg and we're gonna start chopping. Now, if you have not done your knife safety video, you have to make sure you do that first um, because I'm not gonna be going over a lot of knife safety techniques. Just make sure that you've got your claw um, and you've got your cutting board and you've got a flat surface and you chop vegetables so that you create a stable surface, okay? So I've got my broccoli. I've already, in the recipe it says to chunk it. Now, typically when I do stir fry, fry, I do pieces like this. So I do long stem pieces so that I can use all of the stem because there's tons of amazing nutrients in this stem. Um, and I wanna make sure that I get all the vitamins and stuff in the stir fry. And it's gonna taste delicious, trust me. Um, so I usually chunk it like this, just because then it kind of goes over stir fry really well, um, but you can do it smaller if you want. Broccoli is a really good stir fry veg. It keeps its shape really well. Um, it tastes really good with sauce. Um, if you're not a huge broccoli fan, you do not have to put that in. But yeah, this, so this is what I'm gonna do right now. So I've already done um, half of my head of broccoli and I'm just gonna chunk the rest. And of course I've washed everything. Um, and I'm just going to chunk this now, which you guys can't really see, but it's happening right there. I still haven't figured out how to film properly in school, so bear with me. So any pieces that I feel like are more than a mouthful, because consider what you're gonna be taking into your mouth, uh, you just wanna chop them so that they're a little bit smaller. So this one's not too bad, but like something like this, you might wanna chop in half. Um, just to make sure again that you've got your, uh, it's not too bad like shoving it in your mouth, okay? So I'm gonna chop my broccoli first and then my peppers and then anything like onion or garlic, I mean, you're all gonna be adding it to the mix anyways, but um, it tends to uh, have a much more pungent smell to it, okay? Um, so I'm gonna take my onion and I am going to slice it out really, really thin. Seriously trying to figure out how to film this so that you guys can actually see this part. Okay. So I've got my onion here. I'm just going to chop off the top on the bottom. And what I do is actually I take a bowl like this. So um, I basically have my um, composting bowl, okay? Although at school I don't get to compost, but you guys can do this and then you can put all of your scraps and everything in here and then you just get rid of it at the end instead of going back and forth and back and forth to your um, garbage can. Um, now, for this recipe, I did say at the beginning to do your rice noodles um, and to turn that on. What I've decided for my demo is I am doing rice over here. Um, so rice, when you cook it, it's a two to one ratio. So uh, I've got two cups or two, 500 milliliters of water to 
um, 250 of rice. Um, if you're doing your rice noodles or anything like that, please follow the package on how to cook them. Ramen, the same thing. Um, but for the most part with that stuff, what you guys are gonna do is you're going to put your pot on boil, you're gonna add some salt, and then you're gonna add your noodles and then just time it. Um, rice noodles only take like three to four minutes in boiling water to cook. They're really, really good, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna slice this. So typically, again, for stir fry, um, I like having um, onions sliced. If you are not a huge onion fan, um, you can mince it up and you'll be fine. But again, I like having um, chunks in my stir fry. So I'm gonna take this. And as I take this and put this in here, I'm just gonna spread these apart. So I get these um, thin little pieces and because I followed so these thin little pieces like that, okay? And I'm gonna put them over my veg. I've also got a can of cut baby corn. Okay, so you can get this from your grocery store. Again, a lot of this stuff is interchangeable. If you guys don't have this on hand, it's not like a deal breaker. You don't have to go out and get it. Um, I just like adding corn in here um, just for, you know, the look of it. It adds like yellow, which is another color, um, and it tastes really good. So I've already drained this, so I'm just gonna add this in. Okay, so my last item that I'm going to be uh, chopping up or uh, rasping, so if you have a rasp or a zester at home, you guys can actually take your garlic, peel it off all the way, and then just rasp it into your uh, vegetable area. Um, but I usually typically mince mine by hand. It's just what I'm used to. So when I mince, um, I don't even need to peel it beforehand. What I typically do is put my garlic piece down on the cutting board and I have it so that my blade is towards the board and I go with the palm of my hands or uh, the heel and I smush my garlic clove. So when I do that, what ends up happening is the shell ends up coming off like the skin ends up coming off really, really easily. Um, and it's much, much easier to peel. Okay. So from here, um, I can definitely rasp it if I would like to which is, I would do this, and I would do it over top of the bowl with the rasp, okay? Um, you can grate it, but again, I'm used to mincing my stuff, especially my garlic, and so I am going to hand mince. Now, depending on how much garlic you like, um, you can either add one or two cloves. I, of course, am a garlic lover, um, so I think I will lean towards adding two. Um, but this one, this clove is pretty big, so maybe I'll only do one. Ah, what the heck loves me some garlic. So again, I've got my knife uh, with the blade pointed down towards the cutting board. I'm gonna take the heel of my hand. I'm gonna squish it, okay? And again, this peel will just come right off. And that's it. Maybe this one I will rest. I've got my vegetables. I am going to uh, put them off to the side. And the very last thing, oh, I have a couple of pieces of garlic here, but I'm just gonna quickly mince. The very last thing that I'm going to chop up on my cutting board is my meat. Now, I wash my cutting boards really, really well. Um, and at home, I tend to use one cutting board for veg and one cutting board for meats, which I'm sure um, some of you guys' uh, families do as well. Okay, um, if that is not the case in your household, what I would just recommend is making sure that after you have cut up your chicken, in this case, that you're really, really sanitizing this and washing it down, okay? And that's when you can use a scrub brush, which some of you guys love, okay, um, to be able to do that. So I'm gonna put 
that off to the side. So stir fry, a lot of stir fry is prepped beforehand, okay? Um, so it's a, all of the chopping and everything happens beforehand. You need to make sure that you're ready. So I always advise that you mix your sauce, you chop your veg, you do all of that beforehand. And then when you're cooking, it comes together really, really fast, okay? So next thing I'm going to do is prep my chicken. So I've got my chicken and I just asked for a pound, which is like two large size breasts, okay? Um, if you have other types of chicken, you can definitely use that, like chicken thighs. Um, anything without bones in them is pretty much what I would recommend. If you do not have chicken, you can always do beef or you can just make it as a veggie stir fry, okay? You don't even actually need to add in um, chicken or beef, all right? So meat safety. Meat safety is huge, okay? So we need to make sure that after we have chopped this up that we definitely make sure that we are washing our hands and anything that has touched chicken or anything that has chicken juice is going over to the side of our kitchen, um, our sink, and we are washing it with hot, hot water, okay? Um, we do not want to spread anything or contaminate anything. Um, my knife, this is the last thing I'm gonna cut with my knife and then my knife goes by my sink, okay? And I'm gonna make sure to wipe down my area before I start mixing my sauce, all right? So I'm gonna grab my meat and I'm just gonna be slicing this meat. And actually um, slicing frozen chicken is much easier, like slightly frozen. Um, so if you do end up taking um, breasts out of the uh, fridge or the freezer and are using it for this, um, I would actually recommend like slightly frozen, like pretty much defrosted, but almost frozen uh, chicken breasts. And you've got to make sure then that you're cooking them all the way, okay? And they will give off more water if they're frozen as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be slicing this into thin slices. After I do that, I'm gonna wash my hands um, and I'm then going to put a little bit of salt on it. I said in the recipe one milliliter and I always salt my chicken because it brings out the natural flavor in my chicken, okay? So I'm going to just slice this and move it onto my cutting board. And if I feel like the pieces are too big, again, I wanna do bite-sized pieces. And I will, I do remember that uh, chicken will shrink, okay? Because a lot of the water will come out of it. If you have a problem with touching chicken, I know some of people do, um, you can use a fork, okay? Just to pry this uh, and then slice, but I don't really have a problem with slicing chicken. And I do wanna make sure that they're pretty even in size. I don't wanna have any huge chunks or anything. Um, because I want the timing of this all to be the same and I have to make sure I fully cook my chicken in my stir fry, okay, so that I do not get sick. All right, so I've got one breast cut up and now I'm gonna do the second one. And if there are any fat pieces, if there's anything in here that is kind of fatty that I do not want, um, I can always cut that away. I just have to make sure that I don't do it in an unsafe way with my knife. So if there are a couple pieces that do have a little bit more fat on them, again, I can cut them away, but I, like fat is, is typically it tenderizes meat and, and provides it with a little bit of juice. Um, but again, there's some people who have preferences of cutting away like all of the chicken breast it's totally up to you. You can also do this stir fry with prawns. Um, if you are going to do prawns, you would add them uh, closer with the, um, the veg because they take less time to cook. Again, I'm just slicing, almost done. And then I'm going to salt this. Okay. So this part is part of my excess. So I'm just gonna get rid of that, all right? So 
My hands are pretty uh, chicken juiced at this moment, so I'm actually going to wash them before I go and try to get my salt. But you have to remember that as soon as you touch stuff that has chicken or chicken juice on it or whatever, you have to wash your hands, okay? This is like simple meat safety. So I'm just gonna go down to my face. Wash my hands really, really well. In the hot, hot water. If I have any chicken that's like stuck underneath my nails, because I'm sure some of you guys are just absolutely grossed out by that, um, but I do want to make sure that I get up underneath my nails. So I'm going to take my uh, two milliliter, I'm just going to use one milliliter, and I'm just going to sprinkle this with just a little bit of salt. And again, if you are not a family that eats a lot of salt, um, maybe you could not do this, but I find that I like it um, because again, it like, tenderizes the meat, brings out the natural flavor. So I've got the salt there. I'm just going to massage it. Um, and there I go. So I've got my chicken, it's ready to roll. I've got my veg, it's good to go. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to prepare my frying pan um, and heat it up with my oil. But again, I have to wash my hands. Okay, so for this, um, I am going to take like a wok or a large size frying pan uh, to cook this. And I've got it on my larger element. I'm going to heat this up onto medium, which is about, okay? So you don't wanna go over that. I do wanna make sure that I heat it up pretty well. Um, I am going to saute my chicken first. Get it to uh, where it's a little bit pink in the inside, but not fully, just so I start the cooking process. And then I am going to add in my veg. Now, with this frying pan, I obviously do not have a lid for it. And I have asked you, I think in this recipe, I said with lids, yeah. Okay, so if you do not have a frying pan lid, which a lot of people do not, you can actually use pans to, to do it instead. So for this, I can just add this and I'm good to go. Okay, and this is just like a pan, it's like a sheet, all right? So that's what I'm gonna use. When you do that though, please make sure that you're watching because if it's metal, it will get hot and you have to pick it up with um, oven mitts. Okay, so I've got my sesame oil. Now, if you are allergic to sesames, um, you can use just regular olive oil for this. I love the flavor of sesame oil, um, or sesame seeds, sorry, not sesames. Let's try that again. <laughs> I love sesame seed oil, it's so delicious. Um, you could also use peanut oil in this recipe as well, but again, if you're allergic to peanuts, omit it, okay? So I am gonna uh, just put this in, I think I said five milliliters in my, yeah. In the recipe, it's five milliliters. Um, I'm going to drizzle it. That was totally five milliliters, okay? <laughs> and I'm good with that, okay? Now, I've got this heating up. I do want to watch it, but in the meantime, I'm going to make my sauce. So, um, it does say oyster sauce. If you do not have oyster sauce at home, you can totally use something else, okay? Um, again, fish sauce, um, yeah. Tons of different flavors that you can put in. So oyster sauce, this calls for um, 20 milliliters. And it does say to put your garlic in your sauce, and I would totally recommend that as well. Um, I like sauteing it with my veg and my um, chicken only because I find it, as you heat up the garlic and you have that time with the garlic, your garlic is more intensified. If you're not as much of a fanatic about garlic as uh, I am, just put it in your sauce and you'll heat it up and cook it with the sauce and, and everything, okay? All right, so I've got my oyster sauce. I'm going to measure out uh, 20 milliliters. And I'm going to do it with my five. And it's thick. So if you do not have oyster sauce, you can always use hoisin. Hoisin is really, really good. Um, and again, if you don't have hoisin, um, increase your soy that you put in, and that'll work as well, okay? 
So I've got 20 milliliters of that one. I am then going to put in 15 milliliters of soy sauce. So I'm gonna use the same five. To this, I'm going to add my brown sugar and my rice wine vinegar. And again, if you don't have rice wine vinegar, you can just use vinegar. I love rice wine vinegar though. Um, if adding to stir fries, it's so good. Adding to, um, I use this for salad dressings. Um, it's just got a really, there's more depth to it, I find. Anyways, okay. Um, so I've got my rice wine vinegar. I'm gonna take my um, brown sugar and I'm gonna measure it in. And this is gonna be like a sweet and sour sauce. So if my pan is ready, I'm gonna do my sizzle test, which I'm hoping you guys remember, uh, which is where you take a couple flicks of water on your hands, plug it in. And I don't know if you can hear that sizzle, but it's definitely sizzling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chicken and I'm gonna add it. And I'm gonna put this beside my wooden spoon for this one. I have to use a wooden spoon because I don't want to do metal on metal. And what I'm going to do very first thing is just coat all of my chicken in this wonderful sesame oil because I don't want it to stick. And then I'm going to let it sit. Okay. So I want to start cooking the chicken on the edges. All right. Okay, my rice is doing pretty good. I'll check to make sure that I need to, like I'll fluff it with a fork in just a little bit. Um, but it has been cooking for a little while. It's now on low heat. So with rice, you basically bring it up to a boil, then you put it on low heat or like one on your um, elements, and then you wait until it cooks up and takes up all of the water, and then you fluff it up with a fork, okay? So I've gotten down to the brown sugar in this. I'm going to add in my rice wine vinegar. And I need five milliliters of that. So again, I'm gonna take my five. I've got pepper and salt. Nope, no salt, but cayenne is optional on this one. So if you do wanna add a little bit of spice, you can. I'm not going to, um, but I'm gonna do ginger. So I'm gonna do two milliliters of ginger because I like ginger as well in stuff. Um, if you have fresh ginger, um, just grate that in, okay? Um, and you can just zest it basically in and put it in here as well. It tastes really good. And then my pepper, just one milliliter. So with stir fries, typically what I do is I'll make the sauce and then I'll smell it. And if I think it smells good, chances are when, they, when it intensifies, it'll taste good. Okay, so I've got all of this mixed. The last thing I'm gonna do is add my water and my cornstarch. And the reason why I add that is because I want to thicken um, and I want this to really, really coat my chicken. Speaking of which, I'm gonna flip my chicken. It's gonna start to cook the other side. So for my cornstarch and my water, Basically what I usually uh, do is I mix it together in like a little bowl first with like a fork or a little whisk. Um, it does call for five milliliters of water and two milliliters of cornstarch. And what cornstarch will do is if you let it settle, it'll chunk up. Don't worry about that, okay? If you need to, you can just mix it together with a fork and then it will dissolve again or heat it up um, separately just for a little bit and it'll dissolve no problem, okay? Again, this is just to make sure that my sauce thickens. Okay, so I've got my 
ground chicken and again I'm cooking it and I want to cook it again like 75% of the way there okay and this is going to ensure that I don't have any raw chicken when I make stir fry which is really important okay um, if your chicken ends up giving off a lot of water, I really wouldn't worry about it. We are going to be steaming the vegetables with the sauce and it'll eat up some of that water, okay? So again, if you see some pink pieces, just flip them just so that they are touching the frying pan and so that they can cook. Everything's cooking up. I'm gonna start wiping down the camper. But it smells super good and I haven't even added in the sauce. <laughs> different types of stir fries that you can make I'm sure at home a lot of you guys have like a favorite stir fry that you guys usually make um, and you're more than welcome to do that for the assignment this week as well um, but this one is just kind of like one of my go-to's and again depending on what flavors I feel like adding um, you know if I want more of a like a sesame ginger then I kind of stick with those like ginger like fresh ginger um, and I let that to come, uh, allow that come out um, you can do like a Thai chili one that tastes really really good um, so you can get sweet Thai chili, chili sauce from the grocery store and you can add that too. It's like a sweet and then at the back end, it's super spicy. Again, um, the option was for this one to add cayenne or you could add sriracha, which a lot of you guys love. Um, or even like a Thai curry paste, uh, usually comes in either like a red or a green form and you can add that into your sauce as well. If you wanted to make this more of like a spicy peanut sauce, you could add peanut butter. Um, you're gonna wanna adjust the brown sugar if you do that though, because it'll be too sweet, okay? Um, so you could do smooth peanut butter, don't do chunky. Um, and you can add that in with the soy sauce and stuff like that. Um, if you don't have rice wine vinegar, you can always add in orange juice. Again, you wanna adjust the brown sugar if that's the case and do more of like a teriyaki, um, which is basically ginger, garlic, um, soy sauce, and orange juice. Tastes delicious, okay? And I would definitely make sure you add in the cornstarch to that as well because you want it to thicken and you want it to coat everything, okay? So my chicken is about 75% of the way there. I can still see that it's a little bit pinkish Ish, but it's cooked on pretty much the outside. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add my veg. And the big thing with stir fry is that your vegetables should actually be more than your chicken, okay? A lot of you guys just like the chicken, um, but stir fries are so good for veg. They're so good. And then along with this, what I'm gonna do is um, I am going to uh, cook it. So add chopped vegetables and saute together for eight minutes with the lid and then mix okay so i'm going to actually steam this just for a little bit to allow the natural flavors of the onion and the garlic to really come out i'm gonna put this over top and you can time this if you want um i'm just gonna go by myself because i know how much time has passed but i would recommend for you guys just to put a clock or a timer on um, and then check after about like five minutes to see where you're at. You do not want to overcook the broccoli. Um, typically when you're steaming broccoli, it does take about uh, eight minutes, but mushy broccoli is really gross, okay? <laughs> so you definitely do want to watch for that, all right? Um, so I'm actually probably gonna end up steaming it for about four to five minutes and then I'll add the sauce and then steam it again. But again, I want those natural flavors of like onion and garlic and um, you know, the peppers to really come out um on their own because they're awesome 
okay? Um, and when you can get like natural, I have like a hair in my face. When you can get like natural flavoring, it's better. Of course, because I touched my face, I'm gonna wash my hands. <laughs> If you were to do carrots for this one, um, you could even grate it. I've grated carrots in this. Um, any hard vegetable really does very, very well in this. Um, I wouldn't do tomatoes uh, just because they, they get really moist and, and mushy. Um, but yeah, like I look forward to seeing what you guys can come up with as far as like different options to add in. Um, again, I wouldn't do potatoes either because they won't cook all the way through by the time you're done this. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of options, um, but these stir fries are just so yummy. And leftover stir fry, so good guys, it's so good. Um, leftover stir fry, especially like the next day or the day after, the, the flavors have really permeated and they're delicious, okay? All right, so um, again, I would leave it for about four minutes, but I am going to try to hurry this process along um, for the demo. So if my sheet is hot, I'm gonna make sure to um, use a oven mitt to lift it. And the way that you can kind of tell whether or not your broccoli is, is, is done or not is it should be a really bright green, okay? So it should change from um, like a, a duller color to like vibrant green, all right? Um, and the other way that you can always tell is by taking a fork and by poking it. Um, and to see if it goes in nice without resistance, all right? But of course, I'm still gonna add in my sauce, and seriously, this smells so good, right already. Um, I'm gonna add in my sauce, and then I'm going to steam it for just a little bit. Now, if you are one of those individuals that love sauce, love stir fry sauce, what I would do is actually do a double batch of this, um, and that's gonna make sure that you've got that sauce at the bottom that you can then scoop on. Um, it will further down, like you've got um, water from the onion and from the chicken and everything in there. So you will have a little bit of sauce, but again, if you love sauce, um, I would definitely um, take a look at doubling the sauce. All right, so I'm just gonna coat everything in the sauce and then allow it to steam. So I'm just gonna take you along in this amazing journey. So if you could take a look, the broccoli has gotten darker in color, but it's not there yet. Um, and my chicken again is like slightly pink, but I am going to finish it off by allowing it to come to a boil with this sauce. Um, and then I will take it down to simmer and I will simmer it for just a little bit, just to make sure that everything's cooked off and it will be delicious. Um, so I'm just gonna cover it with my pan. I'm going to take a look at my rice and I'm going to fluff it and my rice is all done and good to go. So I'm going to turn that off. So I'll put that lid on so it stays hot and then we serve and we eat but uh, guys this is gonna be good, okay? So um, the way that you're gonna test again for your broccoli is just by using your fork and you're gonna test it to make sure it's, it's cooked through. Usually by the time your broccoli is cooked through, like steamed through, your chicken will be done, okay? If you're worried about your chicken, cut into it or break off a piece, it should break apart quite nicely, all right? Um, but break off a piece, take a look inside, make sure there's no pink, okay? The sauce is brown, so you should be able to tell. Um, and then you serve and you eat it hot. And to put over top, you can put in sesame seeds. If you've got everything bagel topper, if that's something that you guys stash, do it over top. It tastes really good, okay? But that's your demo for uh, this week. This is the stir fry. Tastes so good. I'll make sure that I have a picture of my finished product in the recipe, but stay cooking.